is 1983. The NES just launched with a game that revolutionized gaming as a whole. It gave birth to the biggest icon in gaming history. It even helped save the gaming industry. And that game is Super Mario Bros. Super Mario Bros. set the bar pretty high for the next upcoming platformers on the NES. It sold over 40 million copies, and it only made sense for them to make a sequel. But it would need to be something big, something better, something that no one would expect. It's Super Mario Bros. 2, baby! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! Game of the year since 1988! Like, look at the graphics, the gameplay, and the music! Oh. Super Mario Bros. 2 is often called the black sheep of the Mario series, and some might even call it not a Mario game. And all I gotta say to that is, Mario is on the cover, he's in the title, it's a Mario game. And I know if you're watching this, you already know that Super Mario Bros. 2 is a reskin of Doki Doki Panic. I mean, who doesn't know this by now? But saying it isn't a Mario game is too much for me. This game has helped the Mario franchise in many ways. It brought in some core enemies like the Shy Guy, Bomb Bomb, Pokey, and Birdo. It helped shape the designs of each character, making them have different characteristics. Like before this game, Luigi was just a copy of Mario, but in this game, they instead made him more taller and more awkward. Believe it or not, but this is one of my favorite Mario games ever. Its unique design and wacky nature makes this game more memorable and fun to me. Like, what other main series Mario game has Luigi, Toad, and Princess all playable? Well, yeah, I guess that one. But what other game has you throwing vegetables? Uh, okay, that, that one doesn't count. What other game has cherries as a power-up? I give up. This game is seriously the most wacky and weird Mario game. First off, you spawn out of nowhere. You use vegetables as weapons. You can pull almost anything out of the ground, including a whole rocket. You kill random dinosaurs with their own babies after every level to get a weird ball to unlock this bird door that opens his mouth just so that you can go in it and gamble. What is this? The reason for all this is because the original game, Doki Doki Panic, was all about dreams, and in Super Mario Bros. 2, it's all just the dream in Mario Z. Oh, spoiler alert! I actually really like this idea. A dream is not limited, so you can really do whatever you want, and I honestly think that's why Nintendo chose Doki Doki Panic. It was so wacky and never seen before it could disguise itself as an original game, or a sequel in this case. It was a Japan exclusive, so in the US, no one knew that the sequel to Mario Bros. was just a reskin. People just thought Nintendo was on something when making this. Well, at least I did. They even made a show about this game in particular. Out of all the shows you could have made, this was the one you based it off of? The show was pretty good in my opinion. Then again, I watched the whole series when I was like six, so my thoughts could change. And it had the whole cast. Mouser, Triclide, Birdo. Grandma Birdo. But for some reason, Wart didn't make an appearance. I guess the show was kind of a mixture of both Super Mario Bros. 1 and 2, but mostly 2. I just found it weird that they made a show about Super Mario Bros. 2. Anyways, back to the game. Yes, the game is weird, but that doesn't mean it's not good. The game has aged pretty well. The controls are smooth and pretty tight. The graphics look cartoony and fun. The music, while only having a couple tracks, are pretty solid. Although I wish they had more, to give the world a little more atmosphere if you know what I mean. This game has some interesting mechanics that not a lot of other games did back then. The main thing I would say is the character selection system. You can choose between these four characters before every stage, each one having a unique ability that can be used to help beat certain stages. Mario is the all-around character, Luigi is the awkward one, Toad is the speedy one that can't jump that high, and Peach can float for some reason. This is never explained. Another mechanic is the throwing mechanic. In the previous Mario game, you killed enemies by jumping on them. But in this game, instead of using your jump as your main attack, you can now pick up enemies and vegetables to use as weapons. Picking up and holding items is the main mechanic in this game. You pull vegetables out of the ground to use as weapons, you can pick up keys to unlock certain doors in later stages, you dig up sand to get in certain areas. The whole game revolves around this mechanic. And I really enjoy this idea. I would love to see Nintendo try this again in the future, but it seems like everyone forgets about this game, so I highly doubt they would do that. And I don't really get why everyone forgets this game. I mean, it's the second Mario game. It sold 10 million copies, 
but I still think this game is underrated. In my old video, the top 5 forgotten Mario bosses, 3 out of the 5 bosses I chose were from Super Mario Bros. 2. They never gave the Doki Doki Panic type of Mario game a chance ever again. Like, at least bring back Wart. Please. In conclusion, this game is amazing. I know I seem like I'm hyping it up more than most people would, but it was the only Mario game I didn't have out of the trilogy growing up, and when I finally got to play it, I fell in love with it. The game is fun, weird, and original, and if you haven't played it in a while, or ever, go check it out. I mean, you can't go wrong with the GAME OF THE YEAR! Super Mario Brothers!